One of the more frequent questions I see asked in Facebook regarding internet and traveling in an RV is what do you use? Do I need a cell booster? Do I need a hotspot? Well, before you buy either one of those, watch this video. Hi, I'm Jim and welcome back to our channel, RVing Into Retirement. Today, what I wanted to talk to you about was hotspots and cell phone boosters and how we get our data while traveling full time in the RV. And I frequently see questions about this while on Facebook and it seems that there's a lot of information, a lot of misinformation out there and, and I'll speak to what worked for us. So like most people, what I did is I went out and I got a hotspot and found quickly that this alone didn't solve all our uh, connectivity issues and so many people what they do is they then go out and buy a booster and we did that we bought one of the more popular boosters uh, they're not cheap it's about $500 and we had it installed on our roof of our RV and I found that it, it did work um, it, it didn't work exactly like I thought. So I thought, okay, it's going to boost it through the whole RV. I, what I found is to get the best signal, there was an antenna from the booster and I had to place my hotspot right next to that to get the best signal. And that worked for a while until I learned about MIMO, multiple in, multiple out, and that the hotspot is uh, dedicated to multiple in and multiple out. It has two antennas inside of it, but my Wi-Fi booster would only boost one of the two. And so uh, that was a little concerning and, and there was some talk about better ways that you can get connectivity. So I started to research out there and found a much better cellular modem than just using this particular hotspot. So what we ended up switching to was a modem that was made by Pepwave. Now this isn't the one that we actually started out with. This is a uh, bigger brother or bigger sister to uh, the original one. We originally bought the BRK Max uh, line. It cost just about as much as this, but the first thing you can notice is that the antennas alone on this that are pulling in your signal are almost larger than the hotspot. So whatever two antennas that are in here, uh, there's much better signal gain than uh, your, your hotspot. The second thing you'll notice is that this particular modem has four antennas over here and two antennas on the uh, other side over here. And this particular modem takes two SIM cards. So you can run uh, both a, a Sprint SIM card and maybe an AT&T. It, it runs on all popular ones, Sprint, T-Mobile, AT&T, and Verizon. And so you do get both that multiple in and multiple out, and you also, with this particular one, get a little redundancy. And if you work from the road at the end of the video, I'll talk about some of the benefits of having the dual SIM and uh, a program that Pepwave has called Speed Fusion. So uh, I found it was essential to keep my wife connected to her office since she works on the road. But why is this better than a hotspot? First of all, because the hotspot is only going to pull uh, a limited amount of data in. These antennas will also come off and you can put an external antenna on your roof. And even at the cost of an external antenna, it's still cheaper than going out and buying a booster. A booster is going to run again about $4.99 and I've seen antennas for this that are about 
250 $300. And, and some people that I talked to when uh, purchasing this, they said that you would do better if you disconnected your booster. It's going to pick up the signals better. And actually, that's what we found to be true. These modems are made to be industrial grade. Uh, a lot of them are used for in police cars, maybe in remote uh, ATMs where internet service is uh, not plugged into the machine, so they get it over Wi-Fi. So it's a it's a much more robust unit than the hotspot. The entry level of this modem can be bought for about the same price as this little hotspot. I'll put a link to it below in the description. There's a mid-grade one that will cost about $500 and then this one was $9.99 and it's uh, more of a powerhouse for somebody who's working on the road, uh, also streaming videos uh, as their primary TV source. One of the other features I want to talk about that this modem provides is a service called Speed Fusion. It's an extra subscription. It's really not that expensive. And it does three primary things to help your internet connectivity. The first one is hot failover so that if one of your SIM cards uh, has a problem that it'll switch over to the other SIM card and you won't have any disruption of service. The second big feature is called WAN smoothing and I'm not an expert in it but I'm going to put a video over here that'll explain all of this in much greater detail. But what WAN smoothing is is that uh, as information is sent over the internet it breaks it down on your end into little packets. It sends it through a tunnel on the internet and when it gets to the receiving end those packets are disseminated. And some of those packets can be broken or lost and what WAN smoothing does is it runs concurrently on two of your uh, cell cards that you have in here and it picks up those lost packets. The last feature is bandwidth bonding. So if you've ever had the experience where you start to download a file and it just hangs up and sits there, that's because there's a broken link in the path and it might take a long time. What Speed Fusion Cloud does is it repairs that broken link and sends your file quickly. In fact, we just uh, experienced this yesterday where my wife was trying to send a file that previously took about 15 minutes and multiple tries to send and when we enabled Speed Fusion, it just went straight through. I hope you found this information useful. If you would, please like and subscribe to follow some of our other series that we're going to have on which cell phone companies that we use for our data provider. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you in our next video.